Major support is provided by the Corbett May Festival Fund, Wolgamith Hershity Foundation, in loving memory of Bill and Sue Friedlander, Robert Gould Foundation, Ellen L. Nipper Charitable Foundation, Karen McKim and family in loving memory of Bill, Ladislaus and Vilma Sego Family Foundation, Trish and Rick Bryan, Drew Gores and George Warrington, Dee Dee and Gary West, Cincinnati sings. It's a tradition as old as the city. In 1873, a small group of prominent citizens who loved this city as much as they loved music created something special. A celebration of choral music that was the envy of the country. 150 years later, their creation remains an enduring gift the Cincinnati May Festival. Over the years, the May Festival course has sung at Lincoln Center, at Carnegie Hall, has presented numerous world premieres and collaborated with the luminaries of the symphonic universe. But what's remarkable is this. It's a chorus of everyday people. It's made up of community volunteers from Greater Cincinnati. How do you mold a diverse group of non-professional singers into a top-tier chorus? It begins with this man. Robert Porco has trained some of the best choral ensembles in the United States. I'm an accordion player from Steubenville, Ohio and it began on Webster Avenue when I was five years old. Steubenville is an Appalachian steel mill town on the Ohio River, across from West Virginia. There were many immigrants in this area, uh, and they came specifically because there was work. Everything was the mill and my father did it 45 years, never missed a day of work. And his whole idea was, you should go to college because I want you to do something else. You should work in a mill for 45 years. By age 15, Bob was playing with a variety of bands almost every weekend, weddings and dances in places like the Knights of Columbus and the Garibaldi Lodge. I didn't realize it at the time, but that was such a fertile experience. And, uh, um, and it has such applications to all music, not just playing at the Elks Club. When Bob went to Ohio State and majored in music, the weekend gigs continued. He performed in a quintet of talented musicians called the Embers. I wasn't at all interested in Bach or Beethoven. It really wasn't until I was probably in my mid-20s that, uh, that I got interested in so-called classical music. Bob directs the May Festival course, something he's done since 1989. He rehearses them, coaches them. It's late here, it's late here. The way they perform on stage in May is attributed to the many months of practice that precedes it. That's the way it's done, as opposed to da, da, da. This is demanding stuff. These are not just suggestions. I mean, I'm not a dictator, but th that's intentional there. So don't. He is a taskmaster. Bob pushes for perfection. Da, da, da. Sing it, please. With that, with that clarity. Ti, da, da. Ah. <laughs> and he is considered one of the uh, preeminent uh, choral directors in the country. We are not professionals. We don't all come here with uh, PhDs in music, but we are performing at the highest level. There's no other 
organization like it, I think he's why everybody's here. Bob motivates us so that we give 120% of ourselves during the rehearsal, each rehearsal. He pushes us. Thank you. First problem, write. Take your pencils, write awe. The vow is awe. If I sign a patient, I am at this moment. And that is a, a, a one form of trust uh, in the members of the chorus, uh, which of course we like to embrace and respond to. Bob's leadership style is very passionate. Yes! <laughs> We've come back and yes, we just made it through those last few pages. He deeply cares about the choir and everyone in it. He remembers everyone's name. He is curious about us and our lives and our musicianship. We have here people from all over, 50 mile radius. People who maybe in real life wouldn't even get along. Lots of uh, religious beliefs, certainly, in a divided country with the political beliefs. People from age 19 to people who have been in the chorus for 52 years. People who have all sorts of, obviously, lives of their own, but all that seems to be forgotten on Tuesday night. They sit and listen to me, <laughs> tell them it's not good enough, or whatever it is, for three hours. And it is so inspirational that they do that. It is obnoxious. We just can't. We must be of one beautiful voice. And it's frustrating, really, where we fix something and then just two beats later, it changes. I don't know where you go from Tuesday to see. <laughs> and I don't know what musical company you're keeping. I'm sorry, I don't mean that. I don't know, but if we need to be consistent, every individual, because I will stop. We need to be consistent about the sound that this chorus makes this year. Not just tonight, the sound that we make. Okay? And I think you know what it is, so I don't have to say anymore. Can we do it again, please? In this chorus, if a person were to sing everything that we do, that would be close to 200 hours, which is five 40-hour weeks. And it's truly inspiring. The reward is the music. I run a compost collection service called Queen City Commons. We collect food scraps commercially, so we collect from restaurants and coffee shops and office buildings and food pantries, and we also collect residentially. We partner with farms, local farms and community gardens. We bring all of our collected food scraps to those sites. They process all the food scraps that we collect and use it to grow produce. I feel like I've never known Cincinnati so intimately through my combination of this job and then getting to be a part of this choir. I have these two very community-oriented organizations that I'm a part of. It feels very special. My father bought me my very first dinosaur book when I was three. It became kind of a life goal to one day actually be able to study fossils in person. That's how I became a vertebrate paleontologist. I teach at the University of Cincinnati. I'm senior project manager, Hickson Architects and Engineers. My life as an engineer and music, I see them as two parts of who I am. My name is Julia Lawrence, and I am a full-time music education student at Xavier University. My number one priority is my boys. I'm a mom of two boys. I have an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. Usually, you know, they get home on the bus at four, and I get home right before the bus. Different lives, different backgrounds. The chorus is a community united by a love of vocal music. But there's something else. A common thread is the desire to chase excellence. 
I needed to be part of an organization that really wanted to do something at a high level of proficiency. I do enjoy this level of commitment. It also is part of self-discovery and I see how much I can push myself. But I wanted something that was more challenging. Thank you, that is an A natural, that's why I stopped here. I'm not making this up, Mahler wrote A natural. <laughs> and I found more challenging, for sure. <laughs> I say in the first rehearsal of the year that the expectation is that we will strive for excellence and they could decide whether that's what they want to do. Sometimes we're just shy about challenging people. Sing the entire passage that you're about to sing. When the reality, I think, in the majority of people wish to be challenged. The May Festival course is not the place to come to learn the notes. You come to rehearsal ready to, as Bob Porco would say, ready to make music, not to start the learning process. And so that takes a commitment because it's much more than just the three hours on a Tuesday night. I did not know how demanding it was. Bob really expects us to be prepared before we come. We have any tools that the chorus needs on something called Chorus Connection and on our website. There are some notes that Bob gives us that aren't in the music. You know, put an eighth rest on this measure. If you didn't do your homework, then you're going to be the only person singing through that measure. Uh, that is not going to get it. We got like 30 pages of notes to work on for Mahler 8, which we need to put into our score before we even walk in the door for that week. The more time that we put in before practice, the more time we can spend together working on it. There are files that are online that you can go to and listen to your part or listen to all of it together and learn. Bob will always tell you, have your first rehearsal at home. What that means is that typically for ordinary rehearsals, I would uh, devote at least uh, three hours of practice at home. But for these people, making time for music isn't unusual. For many of the choristers, their love of music came early, and that love was nurtured. My mother, Miss Lutitia Coleman, is a retired music teacher and music educator. My brothers and sisters and I, we all took piano lessons and horn lessons and every lesson that she could afford us. I grew up in a very musically oriented household. I played the piano since I was five years old. My dad is a huge classical music fan. My mom used to play piano and I started to take piano lessons from Sister Romaine at my grade school in about the second grade. But for some kids, the opportunity for musical growth is limited. The neighborhood around Frederick Douglass Elementary is only three miles from the splendor of Cincinnati Music Hall, but it can feel worlds away. The Cincinnati Choral Academy is designed to bridge that gap. The Choral Academy is an after-school program uh, the May Festival, the Cincinnati Youth Choir, and the Vocal Arts Ensemble have gone in together to create the Choral Academy. We're operating in six schools right now, grades three through six. The Cincinnati Choral Academy, it, it is an outreach program to the underserved in the city of Cincinnati, particularly in the Cincinnati Public Schools. The Choral Academy is about more than music. They learn the benefits of working together for a common good goal. A lot of them are in difficult circumstances. We take the time to care about them. And that's part of the, the role and responsibility that I've taken on about being very careful to care for them.
I've known Lawrence Coleman for a long time. He's taking what he's learned from being in the May Festival Chorus, the teamwork and the skills that comes with singing in a choir and taking it out to his community. Back at Music Hall, the clock is ticking. May is getting closer. The rehearsals evolve to address different aspects of the program. And there are newly composed pieces never before heard. These require special attention. A new piece, especially a piece that is unfamiliar to the chorus, in true Porco fashion, he will say, okay, let's just run this thing. And so we might get a half a page. Thank you. First problem. Maybe a page. Sing lightly and be ready to stop a lot. Or maybe two. No, please stay quiet. It, it's soft as beautiful. Before he says, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Have a seat, please. And then we'll go back and start picking apart the pieces that we left on the side of the road. <laughs> The beginning is always like rocky, you're trying to find your way, you're trying to get a feel for the piece. But that process of having gone through it, missed notes, missed cutoffs, missed entrances. No, all, all, there it is. All of that is the learning process for a new piece. He knows that. The James Lee piece, Breaths of Universal Longings, is a commission piece for the 150th anniversary this year. And it is difficult. And it's absolutely beautiful. The chorus has been working on that hard. Bob's putting a lot of time and effort into the rehearsals of that. This could be... Uh, just so beautiful, it is. So we know it's gonna be good when it gets here. Cincinnati May Festival has a deep tradition of commissioning new pieces. For choirs, composers, and music lovers, it's the gift of music. The boundaries need to expand. The great old standards will always be the great old standards, but the May Festival needs to keep commissioning new works that are relevant to our time. So we've commissioned 25 composers to create 25 works for 25 regional choirs. Representatives of the choirs gathered at Music Hall to celebrate the initiative. Many of them have never worked with a composer before. They've never commissioned anything before. This actually is our 150th anniversary gift to the community and those choirs that have been with us for so long, standing in solidarity for choral music. The Northern Kentucky Community Chorus is a true community chorus in the fact that we have high school students all the way through adults up to age 90 singing with us. It's very intergenerational and it is just a lovely group to work with. I received an email from Matthew Swanson who asked if the Northern Kentucky Community Chorus would like to be a part of this 25 for 25 project, and I said, absolutely. And then Matthew uh, spoke to us about the Luna Lab, which is this national organization that uh, sponsors young composers. So these women composers were ages 15 to 19 and a composer that Matthew matched with our group. Her name is Sage Sherman. She lives in Los Angeles, and she's 17 years old. And as a senior in high school, she had four commissions this year. It was very exciting. We're making a piece of music come to life for the first time. And it's a privilege for a choir to be a part of this and to know that we're helping somebody begin her career. In 1897, over 2,000 students from city schools sang at the Cincinnati May Festival. As a commitment to the music makers of tomorrow, the May Festival created the Youth Course in 1987. My name is Matthew Swanson. 
I direct the youth chorus, which is a chorus of students in grades 8 through 12. We have students from over 20 different school districts. That's nice. Say with me, amazing. Amazing. We have no tuition or fees. We give them uniforms. We give them music. We pay for professional voice lessons. If we can ignite a love of choral music and a desire to continue it in a young person before they graduate from high school, the odds are that they will continue to sing for the rest of their life. And that really is our primary goal. Former members of the Youth Chorus are singing in choruses all over the country. They're leading choruses all over the country. Some of them have very active careers as performers, as teachers, as administrators in the arts. So music makers of tomorrow, they're in the Youth Chorus today. Tuesday night at Music Hall. The rehearsals are gaining a new sense of urgency. Each one has to be better than the one before. I don't want to say I'm difficult, but I do not let up sometimes if things isn't correct. And I think maybe people say, oh, when's he going to stop this? It's not only singing, but it's singing at a high level and singing with the orchestra in historic music hall. That's a big deal. It's kind of like a self-accountability thing, like I want to do well for myself, I want to do well for the group, I want to do well for my soprano section, I want to do well for Bob. The next chance to do well will be today. The American Choral Directors Association is in Cincinnati for their national convention. This concert is for them. Just walking from backstage music hall and getting onto the stage is such an experience. It is very humbling. It's very exciting. It is really kind of emotional to me. When you're talented, dedicated, and well-led, the results can be spectacular. The reward is the music, but sometimes there's more. You look around and realize you've become part of a family. The very first time on stage at Music Hall as a member of the May Festival Chorus, 1998, I'll never forget. I walked off stage and I said literally to myself, okay, uh, I found a home. There's no knowing what you're getting into before you actually get into it. I had a lot of anxiety beforehand just about joining something so big and so meaningful to Cincinnati, and it wasn't like that. It's open, it's a family. I'm a researcher and scientist and educator, and oftentimes all these aspects of life I find to be very solo. Being part of May Festival has been reshaping me, making something together and working towards the same goal is a testament to just how music can bring people together. You wonder if you should bring this thing up, but I think it's important to, to bring this up. When I first started in the May Festival course, not everyone was kind. Not everyone said hello. Uh, 
not everyone said, Lawrence, you're on the wrong page. But there were some who did. And those, uh, uh, those folk are why I stayed. And over these 20, 25 years, that thing is non-existent. I'm happy to say that. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Lovely. Almost together. And I'm, not, I'm not being facetious. Almost together. Well, it's a life, you know. Um, I love it. Got it? There is here uh, a true sense of family. And I think that's largely <laughs> cultivated by the fact that in May, they're here 16 nights in a row. So you get to know people. It's the music and the people, and I can't imagine uh, uh, doing without it. But sooner or later, that time will come. For all singers and directors, everyone in this organization. And that's the magic. For 150 years, people stood upon the stage and gave everything. As voices faded, new volunteers took up the challenge, always. And that's how you build something exceptional. Choral music is loved by many around the world. But this, this is pure Cincinnati. This is the city that sings. <laughs>